Das ist uh, so groß. <lacht> so, ich heiße Shaul und uh, ich komme aus Tel Aviv. Uh, ich wohne jetzt in New York. Uh, aber in uh, 1998, ich habe vor einem Jahr in Deutschland gewonnen, in der uh, schönsten Stadt in der Welt, uh, Ludwigsburg natürlich. <lacht> Ich habe studiert in der Filmakademie of Ludwigsburg und das war viel Spaß. Aber ich habe alles mein Deutsch vergessen, so ich denke, dass es besser ist, dass ich werde sprechen in eine andere Sprache, such as English. So, uh, hi everyone, uh, thanks for having me, thanks to uh, Tobias and uh, Christian and uh, Philip for inviting me. Thank you. And uh, this, is, uh, this is really a great opportunity to be here because uh, you know, I feel, and I hope that uh, some of you can relate, that when you work in online marketing, you really operate in a very chaotic environment with a lot of uncertainties. You know, it's kind of like a black box that we're constantly trying to crack and figure out. And I think it's very important to rely on each other uh, experiences and uh, learn from each other experiences uh, about how to, uh, how to do it right. So I'm here to tell you a little bit about uh, what PlayBuzz is and then about uh, how, um, how we did it or you know, what do we think made it successful, uh, which is hopefully something that uh, you can then take and incorporate into your own businesses. So uh, basically, we've launched just over a year ago. We've been in market for a year uh, and uh, grew very fast to be one of the most uh, viral websites on the internet. Uh, we are proudly partnered with uh, thousands of different publishers from all over the world. Uh, in fact, Germany is a very important market for us. We recently started working with uh, uh, Axel Springer, with Bild, and uh, with uh, uh, Burda, and uh, a bunch of other uh, web properties here in Germany. Uh, but most of our traffic is from the US. Uh, and we've reached uh, quite, um, uh, quite a staggering number of consumers, about uh, half a billion to date. Uh, basically, when we started PlayBuzz, it was because we noticed that the way all of us consume information has really changed uh, in the past few years. First of all, we mostly consume information on uh, mobile devices. And uh, you know, I see some of you consume information on mobile devices right now, uh, which is OK, because you know, the way we do it is uh, we're constantly checking our, our cell phone, constantly reading new stuff, mostly while we're doing other stuff at the same time. So we don't really have uh, undivided attention to the content we consume. Research shows that most of us don't even finish reading articles on digital platforms. So 78% of us, we start reading something and we move on to the next thing because we are too impatient. And you know, all of this creates a big challenge for those of us that are in the publishing business, those of us who create content and try to cater this content to audiences. Um, first of all, because we got to adjust our content to this you know, 4.7 inches screen and to the fact that people um, aren't really focused when they consume it, uh, but also because of the fact that we need to find users. You know, it used to be, uh, I think people underestimate how disruptive our social networks um, to, uh, to the publishing world. You know, it used to be that the publisher was the owner of the distribution. Uh, newspapers and magazines had uh, printing houses and trucks. Uh, websites uh, have a domain name. But all of these assets are not as useful as they used to be because, you know, hardly anyone types in a domain name today, uh, right? It's not about, you know, the publisher. Uh, the publisher now needs to find the users, and the user has a lot of selection because the barriers to entry are low and everybody's creating content. And you've got to create content that's viral, that finds the users, that makes the users want to click on it and uh, engage with it. Uh, and there is a new class of publishers that are doing this phenomenally well. You know, all of these publishers only emerged in the last couple of years, and within a few years uh, gathered massive audiences. They do that by creating content, by packaging content in uh, interactive, mobile-first, uh, social-ready packages uh, that are very successful. And our mission at PlayBuzz is to provide this tool set to any content owner, to any publisher, to any brand, to anybody who wants to engage audience. Uh, so as I said, we are fortunate to work with uh, a lot of the world's biggest publishers that adopted our self-service free platform and uh, started using us. Uh, we developed our own website that is taking all the content from all the different uh, partners, uh, which became very popular. We are uh, one of the top 20, 30 uh, leading websites in the US in terms of traffic. Uh, and as you can see, the majority of our consumption is on mobile, and the majority of it is by um, um, uh, young adults or uh, adults. Um, 
So basically, what we provide is uh, a set of what we call formats. Uh, you know, I always say that if uh, content is king, then the format is the, the palace, okay, or the kingdom. Uh, we are creating those content packages that you all see on social media, like uh, listicles, memes, quizzes, uh, and a bunch of others. We are constantly creating new types of content that everyone can take and create content with. Um, and we'll see some examples, like uh, this one, an article created by Build. It's embedded on uh, build.de. You know, it's, it looks like any other piece of content on Build, uh, but it's created with the Playbuzz platform. And you can see that the same exact uh, content item also exists on playbuzz.com and on any other website that wants to embed it. So it's kind of like a YouTube uh, open network that everyone, everybody can take any piece of content and uh, use it as they see fit. Um, this content is very engaging. Uh, we have, you know, for non-video content, uh, having four minutes of uh, time spent per page is really huge, uh, as well as the completion rate. You know, 96% of the people that start an item on Playbuzz actually finish it, so, you know, read it or engage with it all the way through. Uh, and they share it like nothing else on the Internet. We are, for the past few months, we've been the, uh, ranked as the uh, number one most shared website on Facebook globally. And uh, we did that with uh, very few content items, so just the engagement per page uh, is really phenomenal. Um, you know, traffic is growing. I guess we can skip all those uh, great slides about how, uh, how successful we are and get to, uh, you know, what drove us there, so I'll skip. So, you know, how did, um, you know, I, I want to say that the, uh, the fact that we were successful is because we hired a lot of talented people and worked really hard, but I guess, you know, uh, a lot of companies hire uh, great people and work really hard, and it doesn't always work. So what is really the reason behind the success? The quick answer is, you know, I have no idea. Uh, you know, we tried and it worked. Uh, but I'll try to be a bit more specific and uh, hopefully give you some direction. So when we started, um, you know, the best advice I can give you when you start something, don't be afraid to humiliate yourself. You know, I was seriously calling. I was making like dozens of phone calls every day to my friends and say, hey, I'm sending you a link now uh, by email. Uh, please, you know, visit this link and share it on your timeline. And, you know, I'm going to check in five minutes if you do that. Uh, thank you so much. You know, we really tried so hard. We did everything we could. We, we spent, um, I don't know, a couple of hundreds of dollars, I guess, in the first couple of months to get some audience into the page. Uh, we constantly did targeting and monitoring and, you know, very analytical work of seeing what works and what doesn't. Very hard work. Uh, very slow results at first, but, you know, very important just to get the fire started. Um, and then it did, you know, within a month, we got to uh, 15, or within two months to 15,000 users. It's not a whole lot, but, you know, it, at the time it was, you know, we felt like we were uh, fetching each and every one of them manually, so it was a lot of hard work. Uh, and then when we did, you know, exactly a year ago today um, was the defining, the defining moment. So. On uh, February 24th of last year, some uh, user from uh, Oxford, England, created this uh, monumental scientific quiz called Who Were You in Your Past Life? I was a pirate, by the way, and I you know, recommend all of you to take it. And uh, I always say it's scientific because nobody ever proved to us that the result they got was wrong. Uh, and, you know, this was our first hit. And it was really, when you talk about overnight success, so that was the night of, uh, you know, just tonight, between February 26th and February 27th, exactly a year ago. On February 26th, thank you. <laughs> on, uh, on February 26th, we had um, uh, 1,000 unique users. Uh, the following day, we had 1 million unique users. So that was quite a day. And, uh, that's where, you know, the, uh, the product had a real chance to show how viral or how useful it is. And, you know, luckily the product was, was good enough to take advantage of this, uh, of this uh, you know, injection of fuel that it got. So this is really interesting. You know, when we had, among those million users that came, 200 of them started creating items. Before that, we had one author, in-house author. Now we had 200 authors, okay, community members that started creating stuff on Playbuzz. And out of them, you know, their uh, work helped us to reach 13 million users, because now we had quite so many hits, and, you know, the more traffic you have, some of it converts into people who create content. Some of this content is crappy, some of it is mediocre, but some of it is really good, and then, you know, the really good stuff uh, picks everything up. And so within a few months, we got to the point 
that we had 67 million unique users and 10,000 content creators. And then it became like a real machine that, uh, you know, that is hopefully un unstoppable uh, for now. I want to share a bit of the tactics. And I'll start by actually talking less about the um, you know, granular hacks that we did and more about the perception of marketing. So the first thing, which may sound obvious, but you know, I find that it really isn't, it wasn't obvious to me, is that we don't work with tools, we work with ecosystems. What does it mean? If you work with, uh, if you, let's say, incorporate Google Analytics for your um, uh, and, you know, site metrics, but you don't use the other Google products, you're not making the most out of your system. We learned that you know, all of those family, all of those suites of products are really tied and integrated together, and they really work the best when you take advantage of the full spectrum of them. So, you know, with every ecosystem we work with, and we work with a lot because, you know, the internet that we always like to think of as a very open and democratic environment always has gatekeepers. You know, it always has some companies that really control the flow of, you know, most of the internet traffic. So, you know, we work with Facebook, we work with uh, Google, we work with WordPress, and in each of these environments, we are not just sporadically testing them, we are really trying to take full advantage of their entire, uh, their entire cycle. Uh, another thing is, you know, it's very easy to adapt little tactics that you hear about, but they're not going to work for you unless you really understand the sort of the essence behind them, unless you come with a really, really purposeful intent of what you're trying to achieve, and you're using those tools um, in the context of those goals. So, for instance, you know, for us it means that you can always take example from what other people are doing and test it, but you really got to understand what's behind it and why are they doing it. So it's really about finding your original voice. And we find that creatively, our original voice, you know, the stuff that we created and try to guide the community to create, is a lot about uh, creating a narrative, about putting people in different situations and asking them to respond to it, about creating a meaningful reward in the end so people will share it. Like, you know, telling you that you were a pirate in your uh, previous life uh, is something that if it's done right, if you create a whole story behind it and you make it, you know, you make the user feel like, um, you know, it's something that they really care about, then they'll actually share it and it will actually go viral. So when we did that, you know, if you compare us, let's say, to a, a different website with a similar name that, uh, you know, we're sometimes being confused with, um, you know, you can see how many differences there are, how a similar product or a product from the same family can be substantially different in its perception. Because here, you know, see on BuzzFeed uh, and PlayBuzz, you have uh, a quiz with the same title pretty much. Can we guess your age? But you know, we took um, a different approach, and uh, you can see the differences. Like, they took three little images as answers. We picked textual answers, but one big image as a centerpiece because we felt that this creates more, or, you know, we tested and realized that this creates more engagement. Our questions are more about what I call the situational questions. Like, how would you react to this? How would you react to that? Because we feel that that's what makes people feel that then the result that they're getting is really relevant to who they are versus, you know, BuzzFeed that took a more humoristic, light approach of, uh, you know, making it more random and more pop culture. So all of these little differences, you know, really do make a difference. And once you find your original voice, uh, you know, that is really the lead. Um, we do a lot of testing and we develop systems, like in this case, we developed a recommendation engine. But before we did, we tested everything manually. So we started, you know, we built all the algorithm manually and we tested results. And then when we figured out what the formula is, you know, what are the different considerations for what make a recommendation optimized, then we build the technology to do it. So, you know, it's a lot about not building the, not going with technology first, but building technology when you actually know what works and what doesn't. Um, and now for some very specific little hacks that, you know, hopefully you can try at home and, uh, and uh, be successful with as well. So, for instance, when we launched a new format, um, we, did, you know, we were debating between several ones, so we tested. We put uh, a button that says, you know, a format called Gallery Quiz. We didn't even know what Gallery Quiz is. We tested like a hundred different things, and we saw what's getting the most clicks. And when Gallery Quiz got the most click, we said, okay, now let's develop a format called the Gallery Quiz. So, you know, sometimes it's actually helpful to test before you build, so you know what to build. Um, Another interesting lesson, you know, we experimented with share buttons, share obviously being the biggest driver of our traffic, and we saw that, um, you know, when you put a lot of different share buttons, like some of the other um, companies that we try to take example from did, uh, it uh, yields much less favorable result than when you focus on the one or two networks that your audience is really engaged with. 
So, you know, again, you see how we more than doubled our reach uh, due to this hack. Um, constant testing of uh, titles and uh, thumbnails, you know, we changed them, it makes a difference. So we moved from 12% uh, to 16% click, click through rate on one of them, uh, just because we tested different things. Uh, very quickly, I got two more. So we spoke about the fact that people don't read articles to their full extent. Here's an article about seven fascinating fa facts about Elvis Presley. You know, we took similar content, we conveyed the same content in this format. Uh, it's not even a quiz, it's just like, you know, it shows you seven images and it has, it's not even a question, just a question mark. It says, it's pointing to the dude's hair and say something, and then you click on it, and you find out that Elvis was actually blonde. Uh, so the whole experience, we, you know, making it interactive actually made it uh, much more useful. And then uh, last but not least, uh, what we do all the time is we constantly test the content. So for instance, uh, in a quiz that has several results, in this quiz, uh, who were you married to in your past life? Past life is a very important theme in the Playbus universe. Uh, so, um, you know, I wish we could do the sequel about what will you be in your next life and, um, and be successful with it. So we find out that, you know, the people that get the results of Gandhi are much less likely to share than those who get the results of James Dean or John Lennon. So, you know, we improved the, the average share rate of the item from 12% to 18% by replacing, uh, you know, the content uh, from Gandhi to Al Capone. So uh, for all of you uh, out there who want to marry uh, Al Capone, you know, we have, uh, we have the exact um, platform for you. So uh, since I'm uh, getting very gentle, uh, you know, <laughs> innuendos here that it's time to wrap up, I just want to thank you for uh, being here and listening. And, uh, uh, you know, good luck to you in everything. This is a great opportunity to be here. And uh, once again, thank you. Bye-bye.